Let's look at another example, which is a bit more complicated than the last one, but still uses the same strategy, same concept. Abby drove from his home to college at 60 miles per hour. Okay, returning over the same route, there was a lot of traffic and he was only able to drive at 40 miles per hour. Right? If the return trip took one hour longer, how many miles did he drive each way? All right, so let's represent this, this information graphically. So, Abby is going from home to college, right? And then from college back to home, right? Now the question says that on the journey from home to college, he was able to drive at 60 miles per hour. Okay. However, coming back from college to home only at 40 miles per hour. Right. So we are at this point we're just putting all the information down there. The other thing that the question tells you is that it takes every an hour longer, obviously it's the same distance, you know, home to college, college to home, but speed is low, so the time will take longer. And the question says it takes one hour longer. So it's plus one hour on the return trip compared to the uh, going trip. Okay, so, so and then the question is asking how many miles, the total miles that you drive each way. Again, with word problems, you can go ahead and say the thing that you've been asked, how many miles. Let's say miles, the distance is D. Okay, we're assuming it's D. Right. So this question uses the speed concept, right, which we had looked earlier. Speed is given by your distance here in miles over time, which is in hours. Okay, simple as that. So, so we know the speeds. The distance we said is D, right? We are saying assume it's D miles. So let's just say D miles here and D miles here. The other variable is time, right? So they don't give us much information on time. They say, okay, the return journey takes an hour extra. So how about for time also? We say the journey from home to college, let's assume it takes T hours, right? Then the return journey would actually be T plus one, right? So it's T hours to go, T plus one to come back. Right? Okay, so now let's write equations. Use the speed formula to write equations. So our first equation here, which corresponds to every going from home to college, I will use speed equals distance over time. Okay. Speed is 60 miles per hour. Distance, I'm saying assume D. Time, I'm saying assume T for the journey from home to college. Now the second one is when I'm going and I'm going from college back to home, right? Again, I use speed equals distance over time. This time the speed is going to 40. Distance is same, right? And time, time is additional one hour compared to the journey from home to college, so it's t plus one, right? Okay, so the question is asking me the miles, right? So that's what I want to solve for, but here I have two unknowns. So I have two equations, equation one, another equation, equation two, right? Two unknowns, but the one I'm really interested in is in the distance t, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the first equation and rearrange it so that I know what's time in terms of distance, okay? So I'll take, basically I'll exchange these positions. So I'll get time is distance divided by 60. Okay, so this is important. You don't want to solve this equation for distance because you'll see at the end, if you do that, you'll end up with time, uh, which is fine. You can use the time then to find distance, but to be more efficient and save time, you want to uh, rearrange this equation so you have time in terms of t. Now you take this rearrange equation and you're gonna plug it in here for time. Right, but before I plug in, 
I'm going to rearrange my second equation also like this. Okay, now I'm going to plug in my expression for time from equation one. Okay, open the brackets, distribute what's outside. So I'll have 40 times d over 60 plus 40 plus Right now, 40 times 60, this thing basically the zeros will cancel out, and I can simplify this to 2 over 3. Okay, all right, I'm gonna continue over here. So I'll have 2 over 3 distance plus my 40 equals to d. So let's take all the d's on one side. So I'm going to move this two thirds d to the other side. So I'll have 40 equals d minus two thirds d. Now you can do a common denominator to do the subtraction, but I'll recommend this to do it in your head. You have one d minus two thirds d. So if you take two thirds out of from one, you're left with one third d. Okay. Cross multiply your three, you're left with one twenty equals d. Okay. So your number of miles is D120, okay? So this is one of the harder problems. It's not that hard, but it's hard. it takes time. You have to set up two equations and then solve them what you call simultaneously following equations. Even we looked at that earlier too. Okay. Uh, but as far as the word problem is concerned, it's just, you know, in translating mostly. Right. Okay, let's look at another word problem, okay? which I like actually because this is chemical engineering so which is which was my major back in school. Um, right, uh, some of this is cut off on, on the left here, so I apologize for that, but I think it should not be that much wrong. All right, um, let's read it out. A brown flask contains a con concussion, concussion, is that how you say it? I don't know. That is 20% alcohol. A red flask contains a concussion with an unknown amount of alcohol. Okay, so let's write down this information. So you have a brown flask, which is 20%, and you have a red flask that you don't know. Okay, I don't know what this is. Let's put a question mark. An equal amount of both flasks is poured into an empty jug. If the resulting mixture has an alcohol concentration that's 30%, so your mixture has an alcohol concentration that's 30% greater than the alcohol concentration of the brown flask. What percent alcohol did the original or red and the red flask contain originally? Uh, so this is important. You have 30% greater than the alcohol concentration of the brown flask. So brown flask is 20%. If you want to increase this by 30%, where would you end up? Okay. So what's the easiest way to do this? Well, the easiest way to do is that uh, to, for 10%, 30% would be 3%. Can you see that? Yeah. So for 20%, 30% would be 6%. Okay. So what you're looking for, the 30% more than class B, is 26 <clears> percent. <throat> of course you can also go about doing all right 30 percent of 20 percent calculate that the net back to 20 percent but this is much faster right okay um, and the question is asking what percent alcohol did the red class contain so what's being asked let's just say this is x percent the other important piece of information is that an equal amount of both flasks was poured in. Okay, so what that means is that in volume terms, um, let's say I took they took V liters or whatever, you know, whatever volume from V, and exactly the same from the red flask, so V V, and they mix it together, and your mixture, the jug in the mixture, will contain two V, right, twice the volume. From each other. 
Okay, so now we can set up an equation which is known in engineering terms, in chemical engineering terms, a balance. So what we are going to do is we're going to do a balance on alcohol. Okay, because uh, we know some alcohol is added from B, some from R, and it adds up all of it ends up in in the mixture. So all the alcohol has to be conserved. Okay. So I know from B the amount of alcohol that was added. So so again writing it in these terms. So I have <clears throat> alcohol from B plus alcohol from A. And all of this should help should end up as alcohol in the mixture. Okay. So I know from B, I added a volume of V, which is 20% alcohol. So the amount of alcohol in B was 20% of V. Okay. For A, I don't know the amount of alcohol, I just know I am gonna say X percent. So it's X percent of V. And in the mixture. I calculated the percent alcohol to be 26%. So the alcohol in the mixture is 26% of the volume, which is 2. Okay. Okay, so we can take out the percent signs, we can take off off. So we'll have 20 over 100 times V plus X over 100 times V equals 26 over 100 times 2V. Now 100 is common across every term in this equation, so I can cancel out 100. Also V is common in every term, so I can cancel out V. So what I'm left with is 20 plus X equals 2 times 26, which is 52. So my X comes out to be 52 minus 20, which is 32. Right? So X 32%, which is C. Okay. So this is one of the harder problems. Uh, yeah, probably if you want to get 160 plus, you need to know how to do this. Uh, yeah. So this, I guess, these you know, mix, mix, mixing mixtures and coming up with percent mixtures. This idea of doing a balance, you know, you have to track this amount of alcohol, or if it's something else, maybe it's some dye or some other component. Uh, but a balance on the component is the trick. Okay, um, so I hope things were clear on this lecture. And as a practice, in your balance book, do the exercise, and there's a word problem section, and do the exercise in page 342 to 343. Okay, and if you have any questions, please uh, do write uh, on the comment board. Right. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.